for that. All right, let's begin today with the joke. Uh, is that all right? Yeah. Okay, just to break the ice, you know. Uh, speaking of ice, what is? Do you guys know what a? Uh, do you guys know what a polar bear is? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, that's right. It's, 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 it's the North Pole. Uh, huh? Yeah, it's like a. Bear. No, none of you are quite right though. It's just it's actually just like a normal rectangular bear. Just after a change of coordinates. That's all. That's all. In case you needed to just it. it is funny. It is it's actually funny. It's actually funny though. Okay, so I have to tell you that it's funny. Good one for the next party you go to. Next like I, I beat party you go to. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, solving polar systems today. And again, this isn't on the quiz. By the way, um, for the freshmen in the room, you're gonna not be here tomorrow apparently. Uh, you get to take the quiz sometime between like right now and Thursday, uh, inclusive, right? So anytime you have to do it, if you want to come at lunch on Wednesday or after school on Thursday, that's fine. I'd like you to get it done sometime on Thursday at the latest though. Okay. So uh, we'll begin our discussion of polar systems. And by the way, this is the last thing we want to say about polar graphs for now at least. Um, by taking an approach that's graphical, right? I mean, that's the way that you approach systems. Even recently when we did systems of like three planes and stuff, we were kind of thinking visually, weren't we? What could the intersection even look like? We're thinking about the solution set as being like the points that solve all three sets of equations simultaneously, or, all, or both of them. We're like thinking about you know, this, a set of equations of two lines in the plane or something. We <coughs> understand that to be like a point solution maybe, or whatever. Uh, all right, so, so let's think visually right away, since I think that is the place a lot of us go when we think about systems. Um, and uh, the first task here on this example, this first example, is to just graph this. Can you do that for me? Can you get a, construct a graph of these? If you have two colors in your arsenal, then maybe you, maybe you graph these in two different colors, maybe one of them in blue and one in red or something. But graph those, and then let's, let's think about what we mean then by intersections or solutions or whatever. Well, we're going to take an algebraic approach to in the blank space to the right. But let's let's take a look at the picture first. And there's no need for a calculator or anything. George. We should be able to, to graph these without a calculator. The second one is, uh, what is that? It's a rose curve, isn't it? So that's, this is, even though this is Systems technically are not on the quiz tomorrow. This is good practice for your quiz tomorrow because I hope you know how to graph that second one. It's a rose curve. The first one's a little, little crazy though. Have, have we done one like that? It's a circle. Oh, it's just a circle? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Never mind. It's not crazy. I just, I forget. It's actually just a circle. Uh, radius four. Okay. No cap. You'll live. You'll live. You'll live. All right, so I think I figured out the blue graph. Do you know enough? Are you ready for the quiz tomorrow to graph this one here? More petals. More petals. More petals. Where do they point? Where's one of them? Yeah, we've got one in the zero direction, so that's good. Um, and then four petals, I think every 90 degrees I've got a petal. So there it goes to the origin, goes to that, 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 that. Okay, so here we go. Something like this. How did I do? No calculator. All right. So, what do you think? Now, now I, now I'm seeing it, right? Do you see it too? It wasn't maybe as obvious from the algebra, but as I stare at that now, I'm looking back at it. Looks like there are. Looks like four places of interest. Maybe. Do you see them? Okay. Good. Four points where this might produce solutions for us. Now I'm going to take, uh, who said it? Uh, Justin, who said this? Did this set them equal to each other? Who said it? You said, Jeremy, someone over there. Yeah, can you put that away? Uh, so I like that approach, because, so just let's see if we can show ourselves both algebraically and geometrically that there's, there's something going on here. Let's see. solve this. One equals 
But we should just get the same answers, right? The cosine, when is cosine 2 theta equal to 1? Well, when 2 theta equals what? 0 or 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi, right? So 0, 2 pi, negative 2 pi also, 4 pi, etc. Um, now, of course, we're only interested on this interval, right? So we get theta equals pi n. Yes? Now we're thinking about the, what theta equals, not what 2 theta equals. Uh, so in our, in our particular case, that means when theta equals uh, 0 or pi, 2 pi is outside that interval then. We're just we're only worried about that interval. So it looks like we get these two places. Um, if we plug 0 in, we get what for r? And if we plug pi in, what do we get? We can plug them into either equation. So let's, I love plugging things into this equation. Love it. You get 4, right? But if you plug 0 or pi into the second equation, you also get 4. Verify that as well, that r equals 4 in both, both sets of equations. Yay! We did it. These are the intersection points. No! What? Wait, what? But I hear you say. Yeah. Well, why do you talk that way? I don't know. Um, why, do you, why do you make those noises? Um, OK. Uh, it seems like there's some other ones I hear you cry. Yeah. What's going on? I mean, explain why that's happened or why that didn't happen, I guess, is another way to say it, too, in the algebra. Um, something about a negative, I hear a couple people say. What do you mean by that? I don't know. Yeah, something about the negative. I mean, say more, though, yeah. Yeah, uh, so let's just acknowledge the fact that we do that we do see something happening at these values too. At um, pi over 2 and uh, 3 pi over 2. What do you want to call r there? I mean, we can call it 4 if we want. We can call it negative 4 if we want, right? Whatever you write down is going to be a little bit of a lie, though, right? Because if you write down 4 comma pi over 2 and 4 comma 3 pi over 2, then this equation is happy. And if you, but this one's sad because they just don't work. If you plug in pi over 2, you do not get 4. So you okay. Or you could write negative 4, in which case the smiley face is flipped, right? Then this guy would be happy. But the blue one wouldn't really have been satisfied. The point is. Algebraically speaking, these are not solutions, right? Algebraically, these are not solutions to this system. There is no, it's not true that if you plug pi over 2 into both equations, you get the same thing. So uh, how do we re reason about that? Well, we might call these common points. And actually, we might call them all common points. You know, anything, we, I guess we can include the original points there, too. These are common. Well, these are our, this is our word we're going to give it. Because we need, like, a word for this. Uh, so we'll call the first kind of things intersections, the second kind of thing common points, just so that we have a name for this situation, where we have like something that we feel needs a name, but isn't actually an algebraic solution to the system. Okay, that's, There's nothing special about it. It's just a word that someone said we should use, so we'll use it. Um, these, of course, are the interesting ones we just were highlighting. They're not really solutions. And then to make it really clear, uh, if you guys would pull out your calculator and, um, and let's put both of these in, R1 and R2. And if you have on your calculator, you, you have the ability to go on your mode and select polar, of course. And then also select under the mode menu, select um, simul, simul mode. And um, let's see if we can't show you what's going on there. OK. So I'm going to plug in 4 and 4 cosine of 2 theta. Make sure on mode you've got polar, simul, OK. Use the ball mode, too. This is the key. OK. 
Uh, let me set up my window 0 to 2 pi. How about negative 6 to 6 and negative, I don't know, 5 to 5 or something? Let's go with that. Are you ready? Now, as we go, I want to know when do the actual two little balls intersect? Are you ready? And when they do, we'll say bam, okay? Bam. bam. Obviously, no, no bam there. Bam! Bam! All right, was that fun? Okay. Would you like to watch it again? Um, actually, you don't need a calculator. You can also do it. Uh, you can do it with your hands here too. This is fun. Are you ready? Okay. This takes skill. It's only because I've been teaching math for a while that I can do this. Okay. Are you ready? Bam. Uh, yeah, you can say bam for me too. Sorry, I just I, I lost, lost my concentration. Bam. Right? So you can do it on the. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm here all week. All right. Um, is that good? Is that good? Does that make sense? Does that lend some idea for why? That actually, we're in like opposite positions as we go. You could think about this as being like not just in the same place, but in the same place at the same time. You might even say it. I don't know. Okay. Um, this doesn't really happen. Well, what just happens? I actually. Hello, world? 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 Okay. All right. Um, yeah, this, is, this, this doesn't really come up in rectangular coordinates, does it? Right? I mean, it's this dilemma. So I think it's worth highlighting. Uh, let's do another one. Ready? Go. What are those things? Do they practice for tomorrow, even though we're not doing systems tomorrow? Graphing each of these is something that's certainly requisite. Yeah. No calculator graph them without a calculator. Again, do it in two different colors if you have if you're that kind of person who has cool colors in your collection. You struggle time? Do you know how to graph a Lima song? No Oh, I'm going to wait, what is it? 
Yeah. All right, just uh, um, just to walk through again, like my mental process as I graph this blue one. I'd be thinking, okay, yeah, this is a lima song. I already have a feeling that's going to create an inner loop. The little, the, the minimum R value is negative one, and the maximum is three, isn't it? For that expression, forget the geometry. Just the algebra tells me that that's like the smallest and largest value that this blue blue expression can take on. So let's start plugging in some values. Uh, forget the rules. If you want to use those rules, that's fine. But if we plug in zero, we get one, right? Also, let me jump jump ahead. If I plug in pi, I know that's going to happen too. If I plug in pi over two, I get three though. One, two, three. And if I plug in three pi over two, I get. I'm sorry. This no no inner loop on this, right? Oh no, negative one. No, you're right. There we go. Sorry. We're good. Will it ever be zero? Will I mean we already just said won't theta take on every value value between negative one and positive three? Including zero, so it does cross through the pole. Then, all right. So, with those four those four points in mind, and the fact that I know something about Limassons that I've done before, and I know how I kind of curve. Um, this does create an inner loop. The inner loop is created in the three pi over two direction, except for like when we're in that direction, we're actually back here, generating points on the inner loop. So anyway, so maybe it takes a little bit of practice too. I don't know. Something like that. Does that work? It might be actually a little fatter than that. I'm, I'm feeling bad, actually. Might be. I'm feeling bad. I think it's actually a little fatter. Does it go under zero, or does it stay like the? No, I, actually, I mean, what I have here is right. I'm just gonna make it a little fatter now. Okay. So does it reconnect? I just happen to know it looks a little fatter. I'm a little happier with that. Uh, a little bit, except the middle is not symmetric. All right. You don't like it? Okay, whatever. Let's do this guy. This is not creating an inner loop, right? Okay. Because uh, the, the, the smallest R value is 1 and the biggest is 5. So let's see if we can get this picture. Um, in the 0 direction, we get 3. And in the pi direction, we get 3 also when we're pointed in those direct two directions. And when theta is pi over two, we get one. And in three pi over two direction, we get five. Uh, because why? Well, because in the three pi over two direction, sine will be negative one, so that'll be three plus two. I think I got it, all right. All right, so then graph that guy too. I don't know. That, that might have been not that great. Here, let me try it one more time. Definitely goes through those three points. <laughs> well, R will never be zero, right? I definitely know that. Does that look somewhat decent? I don't know. Uh, it needs a little more work, but whatever. We'll go with it. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we have some some points of interest to, to talk about for sure. Let's do the algebra and and then we'll come back to the picture as well. So go ahead and try to solve algebraically this equation. Sine theta one half. Well, theta has to be yeah pi over six. And five pi over six. And both of those plus two pi n, except we're only on this interval again, so we won't consider any other values. Um, so let's write it down again. We have intersection points of something, comma pi over six, and something, comma five pi over six.
plug one of those two things into our equations here. What, 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 let's plug five or six in first. What do we get in either equation, blue or red? Hopefully we get the same thing. Two, do you get two? Two would be R. Yeah, if you plug five or six in for theta, do you get two for R in both equations? Hopefully you do. And also five, five or six? Two. Hopefully we get the same thing, just oh. from the picture. I don't know. Not in general necessarily, but in this particular case, I just from the symmetry of the picture, um, I think I think I'm guessing that that's true. Uh, so this this illustrates that my picture is just a little bit wrong. They should have intersected there and and uh, and there, actually. So you know, sue me. Okay, whatever. But the point is, I, I think I understand where those are. Uh, are there any common points? These are common points. Are there any? We also have maybe something else, though, Haley. Yeah, and how would you like to name that point? I mean, one give, pi yeah, one pi over two. Again, any way you name it is like a little bit of a lie, right? You could also name it like uh, negative one comma three pi over two, right? But no matter how you name it, it's wrong because it doesn't actually satisfy the equations. Like if you plug pi over two into both equations, you do not get one for r in both cases, right? Right? But it is on the graph in like a rectangular coordinate sense, so like we, we should name it somehow. And the question is like, do we just do so visually? And the other two above too, right? Isabel? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like a hard point. Yeah. yeah like How would you find it? Uh, yeah, right now we're just going to give you the visual technique, but, and that's good enough for what we're doing. But you should be like, you should, as a mathematician, have that hole in your heart, right? That, like you desire more in your life. Yeah. Um, is that the only time when that could happen is when R is negative? It's like, is that confusion? Is that that peak point? Uh, Um, okay, I, I think there might be another time when this happens too. Um, uh, yeah, oh yeah, like take, um, take, uh, I'm trying to give two good, good graphs that intersect with zero. Um, like, can you imagine, um, hmm. I guess the point is, like, if two graphs intersect, I'm trying to come up with a nice example of this, but if two graphs are going, like, at different speeds, um, you might you might have a case where um, where two graphs are, uh, what am I doing, um, are intersecting at, 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 at the same R value even, but at... Um, like what if the solution pi over two, you plug in pi over two and you get, and you get two. And for the other graph, you plug in five pi over two and you get two. You with me on that? Like th that's a definite possibility of something that could happen, right? So, um, so there might be a little more to the story, but let's just go visually right now. Now let me leave you with one kind of little challenge problem that has nothing to do with systems law. That's like a homework you can think about. It. Yeah. Negative one comma three pi over two? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let me get to your homework. Here's a problem to think about. We should have, we should have also looked at the graph of that last one. That would have been fun. We, maybe we'll still do that. We got to say bam. Bam. Maybe I'll pull that up in a second. There's a problem up there. I'm going to try right now. Where? 
Alright. Hey guys. So um let me let me not let me not answer this question, but let me let me just make sure you understand what it says. And then you'll come back to me with an answer, maybe, I don't know. Or maybe you'll be able to solve it still in the next two minutes. Um listen. I clearly I graphed this somehow in some digital utility. I used like a graphing calculator on my computer. And the thing I typed in was this. I promise, that's the equation I typed in. But obviously I, I typed it in a, in a way that I also provided like a theta min and a theta max on, my cal on the calculator. Mm -hmm. So that it would only draw one of the five petals, right? Um, so I? my question is what was my theta min and theta max in order to draw this? Okay, so figure it out. Right. That's, that's the question we need to think about. Right, so don't think about an algebraic technique. I'm not guess. Zero starts here, doesn't it? Yeah, is zero. So that would be you being here. So once it starts at the beginning, draw it and stop. Alright, bye.